Hello friends. Welcome to Ultimate Fanfiction. How are you all? So we are back with an interesting series on what if Naruto was a powerful ninja with powerful friends. Also be sure to subscribe and like this video. Now let's begin. Hanabi Hayuga woke with a mighty yawn, her arms stretching out above her head as her body extended. Several satisfying pops echoed in her ears causing her to smile. The moment she was done she slid out of bed and made her way to her dresser, removing her night robe as she did so. Hanabi Hayuga was 13, almost 14. Her birthday would be in only three weeks. But for now she was still only 13. She would have to wait for her new training to begin. Another small yawn escaped her as she checked herself in the mirror. It was a daily routine that her father insisted on. Head, good, arms, sore from practice yesterday but perfectly fine. Torso excellent, cup size is still low B. Legs fine, seems like everything is in good order. Hanabi sighed and began to pull out clothes for the day. Over her head went a fishnet shirt, designed to stop low-velocity projectiles and unenhanced blades. After that she pulled on her ninja pants, dark blue to match her favorite color. She sighed as she sorted through her shirts. For a while she'd been very partial to a good sweater or jacket like her sister, but these days she found such clothing too hot for Konoha's summers. She found one in light blue, gray and slipped it over her head, pulling it down. Hanabi was about to grab her headband from the top of her desk when she heard a door slam close down the hall from her room. Raising her eyebrows she activated her Byakugan to see who it was. A rare sight greeted her. Hanada was outside, storming down the hall past her room, with a look that could have evaporated Taki's great waterfall in seconds. Hanabi rarely saw her sister when she was furious, it was slightly terrifying to say the least. Especially now that she was 16. Hanabi didn't know the exact details but she knew the root cause. Hanada was going through puberty. Her father said that it would be clear to her what was happening to her sister on her 14th birthday. Needless to say, it made her look forward to it even more. It had been eating at her for the past couple months or so, especially since Naruto came back from his training trip. Why was her big sister changing so much? Why the sudden violent streak? And more importantly, why was she disallowed from leaving the compound until further notice? She didn't understand why Hanada was being punished. For what, doesn't make any sense to me, but if father is telling the truth then I'll find out in a few weeks. I just hope sis starts acting more like normal. It's scary when she's pissed off all the time. Hanabi deactivated her Byakugan and walked out of her room, tying her headband on. A second later a blur went past her. She grimaced. The blur's name was Hanari. She was perhaps the most, dare I say it, troublesome person she'd ever met, besides Konohamaru. He would always hold the top spot for most annoying, cool person she knew. Hanari was a Hayuga from Hanada's mother's side. She wore her dark blue hair short with two long bangs in the front that almost covered her eyes. She was tall like her sister, but at 17 she ought to be. In addition to looking a lot like Hanada she had the same lavender eyes as opposed to light gray or white. But that was where the similarities ended. Hanari was loud and obnoxious, having a tendency to tease everyone, even the adults on occasion. In addition to the way she acted she dressed very different from most Hayuga. She wore a white tank top with a chunin vest over that. The short tank top left her belly bare, showing off a wealth of pure white skin below which she generally wore a white, battle, skirt. Hanabi considered it to be a battle skirt only because it was too short to interfere in any fighting she did. And she honestly didn't understand Hanari's obsession over white clothes. The only other color she claimed to like was orange. Hanabi prayed to all that was holy, for her and Naruto to never meet. Now there was a match made in hell. Nothing would be safe, anywhere. For the sake of the village Hanabi hoped that Hanada bagged her crush before Hanari encountered the prankster king of Konoha. She grumbled to herself and turned left after her sister and wayward cousin. A minute later she found them and had the good sense to stay back around a bend in the hallway. Sometimes the two girls really got into it and with Hanada's recent issues they could come to blows. Hanabi could personally attest to the fact that her older sister could deal some damage when the mood took her. So, cousin, I heard to ruin another bed sheet. Hum, I bet you can't wait to get out huh? Hanabi blinked. She did not just hear what she thought she just heard. 
While Hyuga were well known for their prim and proper behavior, and their icy attitude towards anyone not from the clan, they were generally much easier going in private. Even Neji and Hiyashi, widely thought of as the strictest Hyuga in generations, were quite a bit more friendly when not out in the open. And thus there were many things that outsiders would never even dream of hearing in a Hyuga home. Ruining the bed sheets was one of them. Hanabi didn't think she had a dirty mind, but that sounded awfully suggestive to her. And knowing that her sister was maturing now, only further strengthened that assessment. Also, Hanari was a rather lewd girl to begin with. Hanada growled, actually growled at her, shut your mouth before I do it for you. It's not my fault. A playful giggle came from Hanari. Did I strike a nerve? Oh, what a dirty girl you are Hanada. Who are you dreaming about? Come on you can tell me. Hanabi could almost hear Hanada's blush as it preceded a half-shouted half-stuttered reply that only served to amuse her cousin. You can admit it you know. I went through the same thing last year, but I didn't find anyone. I'm just a little jealous that you have someone in mind already. I, it's none of your business. Hanada shouted, Oh, don't you mean, who, as opposed to, it, I wonder if I should go chat with the Uzumaki guy that your teammate Kiba was talking about. Don't you dare do anything to Naruto-kun. All, he's, don't go near my Naruto. Hanabi winced at the volume. If her cousin wasn't careful Hanada would put her head through a wall, again. The normally kind Hayuga was prone to blow up with little or no provocation when it came to a certain blonde. Hanabi never really understood why she was so infatuated with the guy. Sure he was fun and he had that irrepressible personality like Konohamaru, but he was still a clanless weirdo. At least Konohamaru was from an important family. Then again if she remembered right her father told her that there was more to him than met the eye. So, maybe if her father could see it then Naruto was more special than she thought. Her mind conjured up a mental image of him. A sort of before and after shot. Before he'd left to go on his training trip he'd been brash and unpredictable and weird, and at the same time, nice and pretty strong. Now he was less brash, more unpredictable, just as weird and... Kami, he got better looking that was for sure. Eyes the kind of blue that reminded her of the mission she'd taken to the coast a month or so back. Golden hair that he'd let grow out a little bit and framed his face slightly. His skin was a deeper sunkissed tan in his body. Well, despite his obsession with orange, he had more muscle than Neji, or any of the rookies besides maybe, Kiba. I guess with his personality and god looks there is something to like about him, but why did Sis like him before the training trip? Hanabi didn't receive an answer in the form of words, or even an answer to her question per se. What she did receive was a blow to the side of the head as Hanari was thrown through the wall. Both Hayuga tumbled to the floor as Hanada shouted obscenities at Hanari. The elder Hayuga looked down at Hanabi rubbing the side of her own head with a sheepish expression. I guess I pushed a bit too hard this time, but I always wondered what she'd do if I suggested that I was reacting to her crush. Found out didn't I? Hanabi roughly pushed her cousin off her snapping, go get your head shoved through another wall or something, and stop being mean to my sister. Oh, I suppose I can stop. My head does hurt a bit now. By the way did your cup size increase? It feels like you're a bit bigger now. Hanabi lashed out with one hand and missed Hanari's head by inches, while she covered her chest with the other. She didn't like to admit it, but she was insecure about her breast size. Her mother had been a D-cup. Hanada was almost a double D cup and her cousin was too. It wasn't fair. Why did she have to be the one stuck as a mildly bumpy board? She growled, hating the fact that her cousin could get to her like this. She damn well knew that she hadn't gotten any bigger. If she had she would have noticed in the mirror and she would be excited instead of annoyed. Go bother someone else. Okay if you say so. She smirked and looked to where Hanada had disappeared to. Hanabi growled and not my big sis. Actually go bother someone who isn't a Hayuga at all. Hanari shrugged and stood up, patting herself down. Hanabi's eyes were drawn to her bust as her cousin turned and, skipped down the hall past her. I swear, if she wasn't four years older than me I would so kick her butt in our spars. But right now I can barely keep up with sis. She's been tearing me apart lately. Even Neji is freaked out by it and he never gets freaked out unless Naruto or his own team is involved. Hanabi shivered and stood, heading down the hall after her cousin. 
She didn't want to think about Neji's team, they were just too weird, way too weird. As in completely outclassing Naruto on the weirdness scale. It really was freaky, or in Guy and Lee's case, freakish. Another shiver crawled up her spine thinking about, flames, and, youth. Got to get that out of my head. Oh god, need a mental reboot right now. Anyone watching Hanabi would have easily noted the disturbed look on her face as she frantically tried to delete all memories that involved green spandex, hoping to thereby eliminate all traces of a certain pair of shinobi which she did not want stuck in her head all day. Naruto Uzumaki yawned and rolled over. Then his alarm clock rang. Fast as a snake, his hand slammed down on it, cutting it off before the second series of noises could escape the device. Or pulverized device as it was now. He groaned and opened his eyes, looking up at his ceiling. He really just wanted to go back to sleep, but that wasn't an option. Nope, not at all. He needed to get back to training. Or more specifically, he needed to find that lazy-ass sensei of his and convince him to train him for his elemental release. The thought of goading Kakashi into completing such a task was bothersome and, in a fit of anger, he banished it. Naruto closed his eyes, determined to go back to sleep. A short moment later he heard a knock at the door. It was, judging by the pounding and the space between, ah, yes. That would be Sakura, he really didn't want to talk to her at the moment. Her foul temper had improved a grand total of 0.02% since they failed to beat Orochimaru and Sasuke. And with that memory circulating in his head he couldn't help but get angry. Sasuke, Sasuke, that prick. He thought he could just go running off to play student to that snake bastard and get revenge on his brother, leaving him and everyone else behind. It was bad enough leaving Sakura who loved him, but to refuse to return even after someone like him, who was a brother in all but blood, came to get him. That was an insult. Naruto twitched and sat up, suppressing the red chakra that threatened to bubble from his skin and burn his blankets. I've got to get this under control before I hurt someone again. I just wish Pervy Sage was here to tighten up this seal again. Captain Yamato can't do that. He can only force Kyubi's chakra back inside. And he isn't always there. The banging at his door continued as he levered himself out of bed. Damn it Sakura, the door is unlocked. Just open it already, he grumbled as he stumbled across his tiny apartment into the door. He'd purchased another place on the other side of town, close to the Inazuka compound. It was a large single-story place where he would have control. No more rent or his stupid landlord trying to fuck with him. Just his house and his things. And he wouldn't have to constantly worry about the villagers doing graffiti all over his walls. He could ask Kiba to make it known he was friends with the Inazuka. After all they practically owned that part of town. That way he might, just might get some peace. And on the plus side he could forget to tell Sakura about the move and get a few hours of quiet before she tracked him down again. Naruto yawned a second time as his hand fell on the door handle. He flinched as it rocked under his grip. Then he opened it just in time to intercept her fist with his other hand. It hit with a loud smack, sending shivers of pain down his arm. Thanks Sakura-chan, but could you leave my door alone? It's brand new you know. His voice lacked its usual cheer and volume, partly because of the recent failed mission, but mostly because he woke up in a bad mood. Kayubi's influencing my drams again damn it. Sakura blinked and then smiled, Naruto. Finally, I was about to break your door down. Why didn't you just answer? We have a mission to get to so jump to it. He sighed deeply and closed the door, turning back in to get dressed. A mission, just great. That's all he wanted at the moment and it was probably just some measly C rank. What is it with me in missions? It's like half of them are C rank and the rest are R S rank. Gonna get myself into something I can't fight out of pretty soon. Yamato said well enough, he grumbled mentally to himself as he pulled on a mesh shirt. If I ever have to fight the real Itachi, or that Kisame guy, I'll be dead meat. Neji said that Kisame could drain chakra just by being near him. Supposedly he drained Bushier Brow's sensei in a single strike before he opened his celestial gates. Naruto heard a bang from the door as Sakura hit it again. Come on Naruto. Just wait a sec alright. He was dressed a second later. Naruto left his apartment following Sakura. She explained the mission to him as they roof jumped to the west gate out of the village. 
Apparently there was a new group of rogue ninja who all defected from Kuso. And they were all in a camp just north of the village. They were being sent out to deal with them in proper fashion. In a nutshell, kill or capture all the scumbags. Naruto managed to cheer himself up with the prospect of venting some anger. Maybe a B rank could get him out of his funk. A few minutes later they dropped down at the main gate. Kakashi was back with the group, but Yamato had been made a permanent addition. Sai was also there waiting patiently, as he waited for everything. Naruto wondered for the thousandth time if Sai's face was covered in a coating of wax or something to prevent him from making expressions. The pale kid was like a damned mannequin sometimes. Sakura greeted the rest of the team, leaving him to the side, staring at Kakashi. I must still be asleep, is Sensei actually on time? What the hell? He's late for S rank missions, but he shows up for AB rank. Naruto rubbed at his eyes as if trying to dispel an illusion. Then he flared his chakra for a brief second. That earned him suspicious looks from the rest of his team. Something wrong Naruto. Yamato was giving him a raised eyebrow as if it wasn't bizarre for Kakashi to be there at the moment. Naruto realized that none of the others were looking at the skinny masked elephant in the gateway. He pointed at Kakashi. Sensei is on time, either he's a genjutsu or something bad is going to happen. Trust me, when Sensei shows up early you minds as well add two ranks to the mission parameters. Last time he showed up on time for something a C rank turned into a low A rank. Yamato shrugged, I'm aware of Kakashi's, A, eccentricities. Don't worry about it, we have two Jonin, two Chunin, and you on one team. We won't have any problems. Naruto eyed Kakashi, thinking, when would ever bad thing that's going to happen, happens, I am telling him I told you so. Then maybe they'll take my advice next time. He glanced at Sakura wondering why she wasn't agreeing with him. She knew the significance of a timely copy ninja as well as he did. She didn't pick up on his mental question so he just shook his head. Never mind, can we get going on this mission already? I have actual training to do. His eyes flicked to Kakashi. Training that actually will help me this time around. Sai nodded, I agree. We should proceed with the mission captain. Very well, Kakashi said, speaking for the first time. Let's get this train wreck moving. Sakura asked curious, what's a train? He paused, um, nothing, nothing at all, don't worry about it Sakura. Sai, okay sensei. Naruto pinched the bridge of his nose, then realized who was known for the gesture and stopped. It was time for the mission after all. Maybe I can get my mind off Sasuke for a while. Striding down the halls of the Hyuga compound, Hiyashi Hyuga looked for his eldest daughter. He was finding the task to be rather more tedious than usual. Since he'd forbidden her from leaving the Hyuga's village property, she generally confined herself to her room or the training area. But today she was in neither. He sighed to himself as he walked, wondering if he would be able to handle Hanabi when she, in turn, went through her first cycle. It was something that all Hyuga went through at some time or another. Kami knew he'd had a hard time of it, especially considering his cycle had come two years later than normal. He prayed that Neji wouldn't suffer the same fate. It was so, hard keeping up the usual Hyuga composure when your emotions were flying off the handle every few seconds. And that was just how it was for Hanada at the moment. It had started less than a month ago. She'd become noticeably more jumpy and reluctant to enter conversations. After that she'd simply started to disappear for hours at a time, completely skipping meals or training. That was bad enough, but he'd found out from Hanabi that Hanada had returned to her old habit. Naru watching, that was what Hanabi had dubbed it and it stuck. Hiyashi wasn't particularly opposed to the boy. In fact he was grateful to Naruto for acting as the bridge between him and Neji. It was just that he didn't approve of him with Hanada. That was it. A few days later her personality went through a shift, heralded by the arrival of her cousin from out of the village. Recognizing the shift for what it was and not wanting any complications he forbade her from leaving the compound. That in turn caused her personality to shift again, except this time around he barely recognized his own daughter. The first time he heard her cussing her attendant out for accidentally putting salt into her tea instead of sugar was still vivid in his memory. He wasn't sure how much longer he could handle this, new, Hanada. She was short-tempered, explosive when angered, and extremely possessive. 
He didn't know where that had come from. It had just popped up out of nowhere. Maybe I should have listened to her mother's explanations of her own cycles better. Maybe then I would have a better understanding of what is happening. An unpleasant thought entered his head. If my shy submissive daughter is like this, how will my stubborn, strong-willed one act? The normally stoic Hyuga shivered. Thirty minutes later a vexed Hiyashi was walking, or jogging, through the Hyuga compound. He'd told Hanabi and Neji to search for her too. But even so he was starting to get worried. Where was she? There wasn't exactly a ton of places you could hide in a Hyuga's home. It was pointless, or so he's thought an hour ago. He rounded a corner and bumped into his second daughter. Hanabi looked agitated too. Father, I can't find or see sis anywhere. It's like she's left the compound. She's right. I can't find any trace of Hinata-sama. Hiyashi turned around to see Neji walking down the hall on his other side. Hanabi asked, you don't think that she could have left do you? No, but she isn't here so that is the only logical answer. Hiyashi looked between them frantically, his worry turning rapidly to panic. Neji, Hanabi, get your cousin and find Hinata. Tell no one of your purpose. Do you understand? Yes, they both answered. Even though neither of them really understood the reason for the search. Only Hanari had any idea what was really going on with Hinata, and she was the last person he would ask for advice. Naruto coughed, slowly returning to consciousness. Agony. That was the sensation that he woke to. Like a burning hole in his gut. But it felt much deeper than that. If it were possible, dirt and gathered leaves fell off Naruto as he sat up. His eyes slowly became used to the glaring sunlight. He was in a clearing, amid dense trees. He couldn't quite remember how he had gotten here. The sun beat down hard, unexpectedly harsh for the forest setting. Naruto tried to sit up. A howl escaped his lips at the wrenching pain in his torso. He looked down. There were three handles sticking out of him. His vision swam turning three into six. When he took hold of one of them his head was still too fuzzy. It was a really bad idea to pull them out at the moment. He didn't have any bandages. Dot and his clothes were shredded as if by an explosion. The first kanai came out with a slick sound. There was the horrible feeling of metal scraping on living bone. The other two came out easier, but blood loss was causing the wound to go numb. Naruto staggered to his feet trying to clear his head. There were several bodies lying around the clearing. Though they were blasted and torn, they had yet to develop that disgusting smell of rot. He held his hand to his wound. First things first, Naruto thought, Kayubi can't heal me until I get this bleeding under control. The clothing from the corpses littering the field provided dressing for the injury. Despite the lost blood, his mind was at last starting to clear. Where am I, and why can't I remember how I got here in the first place? There was a thud to his left and he whipped his head around. A body, missing its head, flopped out of a nook in a nearby tree. Naruto inwardly winced. He didn't often find himself in such grim situations, but when he did he usually had friends to back him up. Not this time, Naruto mused to himself as he felt his demonic chakra slowly repairing his tissue. Healing from a large wound was not the most pleasant experience. It felt like the worst case of pins and needles in the world and the new skin was hypersensitive for days afterwards. His head fell back against the tree he had leaned against. A few memories from the past few days flittered through his mind. Him listening to Sakura describe a mission, Kakashi showing up on time, that can't be right, right. They seemed too fragmented, as if he was missing something important. So he waited. Dot for his wound to heal and for more memories to come back to him. Slowly, the past day resolved in his head, piece by piece. Team 7 had been given a simple extermination mission. It was sudden resulting from some incident in Kuso and probably wouldn't have been given to them if it wasn't for the fact that Squad 8 was out of commission for some reason. Tsunade had supposedly give the mission to keep them Naruto out of trouble. Then, just as they'd been a good distance out from the village they saw something. He couldn't remember what they had seen, but they had raced off to investigate. Then, a ways from the village when they were attacked, Naruto probed his mind for further info. Damn. He cursed at his thick train of thought and opened his eyes again. He blinked. Then he blinked again. The sight in front of him. Dot not, quite, registering. There was a girl in front of him, crouching. 
She was stunningly beautiful. Naruto thought he was having a daydream or a hallucination. Albeit, the best one he'd ever had. She couldn't have been a year different from him. Pale skin, long black hair with a blue tint. Eyes that complement her hair, a pale lavender. Naruto couldn't help but notice the rest of her body. He couldn't tell while she was crouching, but she looked very fit, even compared to the Kunoichi of the Leaf Village. That was when he realized that she was a Kunoichi of the Leaf Village. He was staring, ogling, none other than one gorgeous and beautifully nude Hinata Hayuga. His heart fluttered, unable to choose between stopping dead and cranking up to a rapid beat. Naruto blushed red as his eyes were drawn back down her perfect form. He gulped out, H, Hinata. Her eyes blinked and her own cheeks flushed red, matching his in an instant. N, Naru kun. Her voice was, different. It was ever so slightly deeper and less breathy. Naruto registered the idea that Hinata Hayuga was crouching naked in front of him a second later. The thought made its way to the deepest recesses of his mind where it proceeded to set up shop. Looking back into her lavender eyes he could feel a heat rising in his chest. This was followed by a hastily sucked in breath as he realized he was becoming excited just by looking at her. It wasn't hard, or well, it was actually. Hanada moved, drawing his eyes back down to where her breasts swayed hypnotically. Then her hands were on either side of his legs as she leaned in close to him. Naruto gazed into her eyes, unable to speak or move, or even breathe. She was so, close and, he could smell her. The strong scent of lavender mixed with some musky smell overpowered his senses, making his vision double for a moment. She was even closer, her pink lips parted slightly. Naruto could hear his own heartbeat. He could see her own chest rising and falling quickly as her own rapid breathing accelerated. Naruto-kun, I, I, wa, words seemed to fail her for several seconds as her lavender eyes roamed over his features restlessly. As she squirmed he managed to work up the courage to ask, H. Hanada-chan, what are yo? Hanada interrupted him, I, W, dot and you, Naru, too. Half of him was shocked at the shy Hyuga era's erotic actions, while his other half decided to take control of his body. Naruto gasped as Hanada broke the first real kiss either of them had ever had. Naruto caught his breath, wanting more. That kiss had been filled with so much emotion, lust and hunger, raw and uncontained. Hanada pushed forward again, initiating another passionate kiss. Naruto returned it, not caring about circumstances or consequences. He indulged himself in her letting his hands wander. They slipped around her waist and pulled her flush against him. She scratched her nails down his sides as she closed her eyes. Naruto felt her tongue slip into his mouth as his eyes drifted shut as well. A second later he experienced a twinge pleasure. Hanada's amateur movements had succeeded in causing a painful erection. He shifted, setting of a moan from Hanada. It was so arousing to hear that his manhood gave hard throb under her. She responded by grinding down directly on him. They parted again, a strand of saliva still connected their lips. Hanada panted loudly, her breath coming in raged gasps. He wasn't much better. After a few moments he managed to catch his breath and form words. But he was caught off guard as his eyes caught something on top of her head. He reached out for it, suddenly curious. When his fingertips came in contact with the strange protrusion Hanada purred and pushed her head into his palm like a cat seeking attention. Even as he realized this he stilled. Hanada, wh. Dot why do you have? Circa dot cat ears. Naruto watched as Hanada's demeanor changed instantly, revering back to the shy girl he remembered. He examined her beautiful face as her expression changed from pleasure to surprise to fear all in an instant. It settled somewhere between expectation and sorrow. I, I'm sorry Naruto-kun. I didn't mean to do that. It just happened. He imagined that she didn't sound very sorry for jumping him, but there was remorse for something in her words. It bothered him, but she hadn't answered his question so he asked again. Hanada, why do you have ears like a cat? His eyes caught a gentle swaying behind her and he leaned forward. Hanada was still in his lap so he was able to look down her back. Her pale skin was covered in her thick blue, black hair which reached almost to her rear. Naruto saw that there was a thin strip of darkest blue fur which started five or so inches above her butt cheeks. This strip led to a long tail, about an inch and half in diameter, although it looked thicker because of the fur. 
Hanada's tail twisted behind her, seeming a reflection of her thoughts, her trepidation. When he leaned back at last he asked, and, a tail, why do you have a tail? He knew he sounded calm and he was clam. But depending on her answer he might not be calm for very much longer. Hanada looked into his blue eyes, not knowing what to say. Could she actually tell him the truth? Her clan would be furious with her if they found out, and she'd already left against her father's wishes. There would be consequences, but I have to tell him, he's my, my mate. The one I want, Hanada couldn't match his eyes as she spoke. I'm, not, completely human Naruto-kun, I'm. His eyes narrowed, so why? She looked back up at him, heat spreading in her chest again. Her hands pushed up to touch his face. Naruto led her but continued to stare intently into her as if searching for the lie in her words. Why did you do, this? His voice came out a bit strained. It caused the ache in her chest to double and then triple. She moved to kiss him again, needing to feel his lips on hers. He didn't resist, but neither did he wholly accept the contact as she pulled away only a moment later. She looked down, I've always wanted you, I wanted you to see me but you never did. Their eyes met again, a few weeks ago when I started to feel different, I started full. Following you, again, father found out and had me, confined to the compound until I went back to normal. Hanada took a calming breath and continued, I, I ran away when I couldn't stand not being able to see you. But you weren't in the village. I chased you outside the village when I heard you were on a mission, I found you here, I couldn't. Dot not do it. She shifted and her ears dropped. I always, L, loved you Naruto, but lately I couldn't stop thinking about. Her blush deepened again, this, her hand trailed down his jaw and under the slope of his chin. Naruto asked, if, if you're part demon, is that why your father didn't approve of you? There was a bitter undertone to his question that Hinata picked up on immediately. No it isn't that, father wool. Naruto. They both froze as a loud shout echoed through the forest. A second later they heard it again, but it was louder, getting closer. Naruto. Naruto felt Hinata pull herself off him and sit back. He turned to look at her even as a flash of wild purple light enveloped her filling the clearing with a spectral glow. Naruto heard thud of footsteps on wood as from a couple directions at once as the glow faded leaving Hinata, transformed. Instead of a naked girl, a large blue, black panther with dark violet eyes crouched there. She looked back at him with what he assumed was a cautious look. Then Sakura landed in the clearing, her face flushed with exertion and her hair pulled back in a messy ponytail. He saw several scratches on her face and arm from where she'd crashed through the trees at a reckless pace. Their eyes met and she gasped, Naruto. She ran forward, completely ignoring the panther which now sat awkwardly by the side observing them. Hey Sakura-chan, she frowned dangerously, shut up Naruto Baka. Do you realize how long we've been searching for you? Kakashi-sensei thought you died. What were you thinking running into the middle of four Jonin like that? He cringed as she examined what had once been three large wounds in his stomach. Looks like you're healed already. You lucky idiot with that ridiculous healing factor. You need to be more careful. One of these days someone is going to cut your head off and you can't come back from that. I know, but could you maybe not shout, my ears are a bit sensitive. She grimaced at his complaint and stood, helping him to his feet before looking around the clearing. Damn Naruto, you really trashed these guys. I mean, usually you go for capture, but I guess you couldn't go easy on actual Jonan. His face fell, I didn't mean to. I don't even remember doing it. I just woke up with three kanai in my belly and a bunch of corpses lying around me. It was Sakura's turn to cringe. One hand strayed to the scar on her arm where he'd unknowingly hit her in his four tails form. He noticed the movement and looked away, still ashamed from hurting her. Especially since he assumed that he'd lost control again and killed these rouge ninja with the Kyubi's power. Naruto was started out of his rapidly plummeting thought pattern by a nudging at his hip. He glanced down. Hanada, still in her panther form, was nuzzling him with the side of her head. Sakura was jarred by the action as well and looked down at the strange animal. Uh, Naruto, what is this? He paused, wondering what to say. It was obvious that Hanada didn't want to be caught but was it okay to keep her identity from Sakura or his other teammates? 
And what would happen when he got back to the village? It occurred to him that as he told the truth, then there wouldn't be any point to her staying in her panther form. And besides that, Sakura would demand proof of her true identity. And that would undoubtedly leave her completely naked, in the middle of the forest, with Kakashi and the rest of the team inbound. Plus there would be some awkward explanations to get around. Naruto decided to lie his ass off for the time being, sort of. I don't know Sakura-chan, she was here when I woke up. She, how do you know it's a girl? Naruto's blinked and looked away, struggling to hide his blush. I don't know, it's just a feeling I guess, mentally he thought, yeah, just the feeling of a hot girl you've known since academy grinding on top of you while you make out, damn, pervy sage must have turned me into a pervert without me realizing it. I hardly even tried to get her off. Fortunately Sakura seemed to accept that. Fine, we need to wait for the others to show up so we can head back to the village. Is that fur ball coming with us? He glanced at Hinata, her head craned up to look at him. Um, yeah, I think so. Naruto reached down and hesitated, then shrugged and scratched her behind the ears. Hinata let out a low rumbling purr. He couldn't help but smile and rub harder. Sakura watched this with an amused, confused expression that was rapidly turning to despair. Naruto, do you remember what you said about Kakashi showing up on time and the mission going wrong? He nodded. Well if that was a bad omen, what about you getting along with a wild animal? Especially a feline. I mean, I don't know any animals that you've gotten along with. Naruto understood what she was getting at. And you think that this is another sign that this day is going to get even worse. She bit her lip nervously. Naruto's prediction of future trouble had been eerily on target. Almost to the point of making her believe in omens. Which was saying something. She normally wasn't superstitious in the least, but something about that big cat put her on edge. He shook his head. Nah, I think you're imagining things now. I think my bad luck is pretty much done for the day. Why don't we get back to the village? It looks like you were hurt too. He pointed to her leg where a large bandage was wrapped around her lower thigh. Yes, me and Sai both need to return to the village. He broke his wrist pretty bad and I'm still not good enough to heal the complex nerves and bones. She glanced down at her leg. And some jackass shoved a katana laced with lightning chakra right through my leg so it won't heal properly. Lady Tsunade has lightning affinity so maybe she can heal it. Naruto scratched the back of his head nervously as Sakura went back to staring at the panther. A second later Kakashi and Sai both arrived, the latter with his arm in a sling. Kakashi not surprisingly, looked completely fine, save for about an inch missing from the vertical white hair. Naruto supposed he'd ducked low under a sword cut or something. Lazy sensei as always, sometimes I wonder if he'll take anything seriously. The only time he ever looks like he is happens when he'd about to die. Naruto examined the small group again, catching Sai's confused look towards Hinata. Still, Kakashi's observant if nothing else. And Sai is too when it isn't something social. Sakura is smart too. Geez, why couldn't I have been teamed with Choji, Ino, and Lee? They wouldn't notice anything wrong about Hinata even if she went and talked. Hey Naruto, good to see you're still in one piece. You too Kakashi sensei, we going back to the village now. As a matter of fact we are. The copy ninja sighed. Both Sai and Sakura sustained serious if non-life threatening injuries. Even with you and me continuing we can't be sure there aren't more high-level shinobi in the area. We're heading back to the leaf now. If you're ready that is. Kakashi glanced at Hinata with one eye. Who's your friend here? If I recall correctly you and cats go together like giant slug summons and salt lakes. Sai nodded sagely. Sensei is correct. You have an unnatural propensity for sustaining unreasonable damage when around animals of all sorts. Our encounter with the S-rank nuke Kat Tora is a prime example of this ineptitude in dealing with animals. Naruto deadpanned. You don't have to use so many big words ya know. You suck with animals, would have been fine. But then I wouldn't have gotten across the point I was trying to make, that you go above and beyond the norm when it comes to disagreeing with mammals in general. Even humans tend to dislike you by instinct until they get to know you better. I myself am a good example of that. An exasperated Sai escaped Kakashi again, drawing their attention away. If the big cat is coming, then let's go. Sakura and Sai nodded before leaping into the trees. 
Naruto glanced at Hinata and asked, You coming? She didn't answer but stalked quickly into the underbrush in the direction of the village. Naruto chased after her. Behind them, Kakashi was frowning under his many masks. Something wasn't quite right. Naruto grunted and ducked as a thick book flew overhead, nailing Sai in the face and sending him back through the office's open door. He stood back up swiftly, turning on his heel and allowing a second even much more weighty volume sail past. This caught Sai on the top of the head as he struggled to sit up. Crack, he was out cold before Naruto had come to a stop. He glanced back at the Hokages whose deadly aim had been the cause of many injuries, and thus was also responsible for all the medical practice Shizune got in between paperwork. As quick as that thought, Tsunade's assistant was past him to revive and head what was most likely a severe concussion. Damn you Naruto, do you have any idea how worried we all were? When Kakashi sent the message that you jumped head first into a group of Rouge John and I thought it was a bad joke. I honestly thought you weren't that stupid. Uh, in my defense, I did win. Tsunade rose out of her chair. That doesn't mean anything, this is the third mission in a row that you've jeopardized because of your reckless behavior. And do I need to ask how many missions have been on the very verge of failed because of you? It's not my fault that Kami hates me. Naruto frowned, my luck in general is horrible on missions. You know that, besides, I blame Kakashi, he showed up on time. You know what happens when he does that, and if he'd been late like he's supposed to, then we would have completely missed those guys. Hey, Kakashi looked like he'd been slapped. I don't think I deserve the blame here. I would have been late if Guy hadn't been trying to challenge me to a fight all morning. Naruto snickered, serves you right. Sakura nodded sagely, as ridiculous as it sounds I'm with Naruto on this one. I've seen things go wrong too many times when Sensei was on time, it can't be a coincidence every time. My cute little students are ganging up on me. I am not cute. Silence. Tsunade roared. One more word out of you without it being an answer to a direct question and I'll have the lot of you working D ranks for a week. All three froze as Tsunade glared at them frostily. Kakashi, for now on you are forbidden from being on time. Her eyes snapped to Sakura. You're on hospital duty while your team is out of commission. Out of commission Suanad Sama. She nodded as she dropped back into her chair. Naruto, you are grounded for two weeks. No missions outside the village and for Kami's sake. No pranks. I want this damnable pile of paperwork to shrink by the end of those two weeks. And the operative word there is shrink. Come on granny. Naruto dodged another book which whizzed past his head and clocked Sai, who'd been on the verge of regaining his feet with Shizune's help. The distraught young woman looked up. Lady Hokage, please refrain from throwing any more books. Sai is already suffering from the last two. It's the brat's fault for dodging me. He's supposed to let me hit him. Tsunade grumbled irritated. Naruto met Shizune's eyes and said bluntly. Not gonna happen Shizune chan He felt a tickle of apprehension and turned just in time to see the head of his panther companion snatch a rather hefty book on trade policy out of the air, not a foot from his face. He smiled as Hinata dropped back to all fours and spat the book out turning her head to glare at Tsunade balefully. The Hokage for her part was sufficiently surprised to drop the next missile she'd reached for. She apparently hadn't noticed Hinata was even there. Tsunade blinked and looked between the big cat which was giving her a slightly murderous glare and Naruto, who looked half embarrassed, half amused. Ahem, Naruto cared to address the panther in the room. Naruto chuckled uneasily. Well, about that, she was there when I woke up after the fight, she kind of followed us here. He scratched the back of his head grinning lopsidedly. I was hoping she could stay here, he absently wondered exactly how this was going to work out. It seemed he was in trouble any way he looked at it. But, he was mostly a, better to ask forgiveness that permission, kind of guy. He'd wait until Hanada revealed herself. Speaking of which, he needed to make sure that no one came to visit for a while. Tsunade frowned and looked closer at Hanada who had stepped back slight to rest on her haunches by Naruto. Her blue-black fur was slight on end, showing her agitated state. However those purple slitted eyes were focused on her. The Hokage surprisingly couldn't make heads or tails of the big cat. Whatever Naruto, I've never seen anything like it before. If I didn't know any better I'd think you found a rogue summoning animal, but it obviously can't talk, 
or it would probably be insulting me for throwing that book. Tsunade relaxed and leaned back in her chair. It seems friendly enough. I'd guess it's a ranger's companion. Uh, what's that? The older blonde furrowed her brow. Rangers are individuals who take to living in the wilderness. They're loners and prefer the company of intelligent or well-trained animals to other people. A weird bunch if you ask me, but they rarely if ever cause problems, or paperwork for that matter. I only mention them because that cat seems fond of you for some odd reason. I seriously doubt it's wild seeing how it hasn't attacked anyone here. Kakashi scratched his cheek absently. Um, Lady Hokage, are you sure that having a large panther following Naruto around all day is the best idea? No, I don't, Tsunade grumbled, but the cat likes him, obviously, and it takes another thing off my plate. Taking care of the damn thing might also keep him somewhat distracted while he's on probation from missions. Naruto frowned at that, but didn't speak out of turn. After all, doing D-rank missions was the last thing he wanted to get stuck doing. And he did want to help Hanada, well, that particular desire might have more than one cause though. He still couldn't get the image of a naked Hanada out of his head. His cheeks turned pink. Why would I want to? A bad as it sounds she's the hottest girl I know, I mean, soccer is great and all, but when it comes to the physical comparison, she just doesn't stack up, and Hinata said she, loved me. Soccer is rarely even acts friendly. He scratched the back of his head. Uh, I'm fine with that, she'll keep me out of trouble ya know. That's what I was hoping to hear. She turned her gaze to Kakashi. Any objections Kakashi? Reasonable ones mind you. Nope. He I smiled. None at all actually, but I hope I'm still a, allowed to train Sakura and Sai here. Damn straight, you should jump to it then. Just remember what I said about being on time. I don't need your curse messing with me any more than Naruto's. Just be glad no one was permanently hurt. When they were still standing there a moment later she looked up from her paperwork. Well, don't you know what a dismissal is when you hear it? Scram. Naruto did a swift about face and vanished out the door bypassing Sai without giving him a glance. A second later Kakashi was leaving with Sakura in tow. Shizune watched them exit as she healed Sai's unintentional injuries. Geez, things just get crazier every day around here, what's left? The Inazuka breeding ninja cats. The Akamaiki going on a clan-wide diet. The Hyuga being caught peeping at the hot spring. A frown crossed her face as a certain memory was dredged up from her subconscious, okay. Maybe not those first two anyway. The front door to Naruto's apartment clicked closed and he twisted the locks. It wouldn't prevent a shinobi from entering, but it would deter any normal person. And even most ninja would knock before bursting into someone's house without being invited prior. Naruto sighed and turned back to enter his apartment. His new apartment. I keep forgetting this isn't my old one when I walk in. Calling out to Hinata, he entered the living room only two for his voice to lodge in his throat. Naruto-kun, he blinked and raised his hand to wipe a bit of blood from his nose. Uh, I hope why, you're comfortable. Naruto looked at Hinata who was once again human, naked, blushing hugely. Um, thanks Naruto-kun, she looked to the side, looking behind him as her tail curled behind her. She smiled hesitantly. Did you l? Lock the door. Yeah, he gulped. Why do you ask? Hanada pounced, crossing the distance between them in an instant. She collided with him, knocking him back. He threw one arm out behind him to catch himself even as soft satiny lips were pressing to his. Both of them sprawled to the floor, Hanada on top of him. Naruto groaned into the kiss as she pushed her hands down his pants. Hi, na, ta. She purred, withdrawing only to bite him softly under his chin. Naru, I want you. Now. Hanada's hands snaked upward, they quickly unzipped his jacket exposing his bare chest. Naru, she purred louder as she shifted her focus to his muscles, nibbling down his chest. Mate, now. He heard the words and couldn't believe he was hearing them. She wanted to mate. Naruto tried to hold her off long enough to get some frantic half-formed words out, something to clarify the situation. This was going fast. Way too fast. Something was different from the Hanada he knew and it wasn't just her feline features or the purring. Naruto managed to get a hand between them, but she swiftly inserted her delicate fingers into the crook of his elbow, making the joint go limp in a flash. 
His arm folded pressing between her breasts as Hinata pushed forward kissing him hard on the lips again, her tongue dancing into his mouth. Her hips are grinding into him again as the kiss dragged on, Naruto was unable to break it without using his other arm. But if he stopped holding himself up, he'd be flat on his back and he knew somehow that she'd take 110% advantage of that. Hanada's arm naked around his neck, drawing him deeper, harder into the kiss. She was already unbuttoning his pants with the other hand. Naruto made the only move that could give him a chance of undoing this without hurting her, he kissed back. Instantly Hanada let him take control, her pale skin flushing erotically from the heat he was giving off. He levered her back, disengaging from the kiss to push her down. She purred and reached up to pull him down to her. Naruto looked into her violet eyes as they begged him to do it. To do her, it nearly broke his concentration, but he forced himself to close his eyes. At the same time Crimson Chakra was leaking from his skin, coating his body and increasing the heat he gave of by tenfold. Hanada whimpered at his lack of attention and lean up, trying to take control of the situation again, only to be forced back down. Naruto's eyes opened, crimson red and pulsing with a light of their own. He gritted his teeth against the strain it was causing. The Ninetales cloak increased his power and abilities by several times, but it also magnified whatever emotion he was feeling at the time by just as much. And right now he felt, lust. His mind was practically taking control of his arms to do it whether he wanted to or not. Even as he pushed her back down his aggression skyrocketed. He barely noticed that his other arm had recovered and was squeezing her thigh as it ran upwards to her firm rear. He growled, pulling her to him, flushed to his body and eliciting his loud moan. Naruto was running on autopilot, while he frantically tried to re-establish some measure of control over himself. It was s hard, he wanted to take Hinata right there and if he went much farther, he would. Through an effort of pure will he forced the Kyubi's chakra to recede, but still leaving him boiling with excess chakra. However it severed its purpose in healing his arm and making him temporarily immune to her bedroom variety of the gentle fist. Hanada at last managed to push him back again, but found herself restrained by a strong hand holding both her wrists. Her purring stopped as her instincts roared in her mind to finish creating the bond she so much desired. Naru kun I, I want, she whimpered trying to lean forward to kiss him, but he avoided her, turning her lunge into an easy pin. He flipped her around to where she lay on her back with him holding her in place. Dimly she recognized that he was using a paralysis jutsu. While ineffective against her in this form it still made her movements sluggish and weak. And he was still resisting her advances. Hanada, stop already, I can't do that. His tone was serious but strained, showing his own desire to give in to her lying just beneath the surface. I, need to know what's going on, before you, do this, okay. But, you wanted it. You were doing it Naru kun Just want more, faster. Now. She struggled, trying to push up. Mate, I want you. He looked momentarily frozen, stuck on her words again. Naruto shook his head dislodging the last butts of fog from his mind. Hanada, stop. His blue eyes bored into her and she went still. Mate. Stop calling me that, I'm not your mate, I'm your friend and until you tell me what is going on, that's all I can be. She frowned, you're my mate because you're the one I want. Both of the felt his minor jutsu shatter as she forced chakra through her body, blasting it out through her skin with enough force to break the paralysis and sting his hands. Ouch, he released her, immediately realizing it was the wrong thing to do. Hanada was on him in a moment, her hands holding his with a grip of iron. Naru, she held him in place and unable to move. Hanada leaned in close her eyes meeting his. Naruto-kun is my mate, she rested her forehead on his, their noses just touching. Naruto could feel the slight change in her demeanor from a moment ago. It wasn't hard to notice, she was actually speaking to him without undressing him. A not so small part of him wanted her to go back to what she was doing, but he stamped it down. Why am I your mate Hanada? Why me? Why all of a sudden like this? She sighed and her breath was sweet, just like her kisses. Hanada always loved Naruto-kun, since she was little, Hanada shifted on top of him, settling herself on his lap. Naru-kun just never noticed. You, told me, but how long? Hanada shook her head slowly. Long time, her voice changed slightly, 
becoming less purring as her rapid breathing slowed to a normal rate. I on. Lee do this because it's what I am. Naruto's eyes widened slightly at that. What she was. She already told him she was half demon, or was that something he imagined? What are you, exactly? I am. Pasani, half demon Naruto kun. She dropped her gaze away from his, as her voice became only hers, without any of the purring or the desire and need. My entire family is the same. I, I'm not supposed to tell anyone, except my mate, but I want you, and father doesn't want you, so I'm trapped. His jaw dropped. Wait that doesn't make sense, you're a demoner, I mean half. I thought the only demons were the biju. You can't be one of those. She let out a long breath and dropped her head onto his shoulder. It's a long story Naruto-kun, but, the short version is this, a long time ago during the warring clans period there used to be only the tailed beasts. Then something happened and thousands of other demons came into the world. They came in every shape and size, at least that's what father tells me. He said that sometime in the past one of the demons mated with an old heir of the Hyuga clan. At the time the clan had been driven nearly to extinction by the Kagaya clan. So he was the last male descendant. His children with the demon became what the Hyuga are today. Naruto, I, I'm not really half demon. I'm actually only a very small part, but for main branch Hyuga we still go through the same, cycles that the first of the new clan went through. The day we turn 14, female Hyuga gain access to our demon power, in the clan I was trained for the last two years to use my demon abilities so that I would be able to use the second level of the gentle fist. And, now, well, when I turned 16 that's when I started to feel the need to find my mate, all Hyuga regardless of sex feel the same draw once a year. For girls it starts at 16. For boys it starts around 18. Hanada's hand traced his bicep. I knew I wanted you the moment father told me about it at 14, which wasn't too long after you left on your training trip, father didn't approve of me being with you since you don't have a clan and you don't have rank yet. It came to a head recently because my instincts as a Pasani told me to find you and make you my mate, if I'd done it right away this wouldn't have happened, but he found out that I was reacting to you and forbid me from leaving the clan compound. I felt trapped and the longer I couldn't reach you the angrier I became, yesterday I broke out of the compound in my panther form so I could track you down, she blinked slowly. I told you that back in the forest. Naruto asked hesitantly, so, you want to, mate me? What? Uh? Damn it. What does that even mean? I like you Hanada, but this was too quick without me knowing this stuff. I know, I know, that's why I forced myself to calm down so I could tell you, I'm sorry for Jay. Jumping you like this, but it's not something I can control very well. As for mating, what I want is. She leaned back blushing red again. I wa. N T S S. Dot sex. That's what I meant by, mating. Hanada glanced down, but when you mate with a Pasani it forms a bond that can't be broken off like a relationship. It's eternal and affects us for the rest of our lives. So, when the bond is formed it's basically an unofficial marriage. A mated pair is married in the eyes of the main branch clan. She looked back up, meeting his eyes with her own. I, I want you Naruto to be with me. He closed his eyes and asked. What is the fine print? What is the bad part that you don't want to tell me about? Hanada whimpered slightly. When a Pasani finds her ideal mate, it brings out the demon blood in us. We become mostly demon instead of mostly human, and because of that, our lifespan increases dramatically. I think that you're the perfect mate, but if we do bond then, I might outlive you by several hundred years. The look on Hanada's face was depressed. I was so happy when they told me that. I could stay with you for longer than the villages have even existed, but then I realized that as special as you were to me, I couldn't make you Pasani. And I couldn't make me, your, perfect mate. You mean it doesn't go both ways? No, it doesn't. My parents were both Pasani. Father was her perfect mate, but it wasn't the same in reverse, mother would have lived for generations, but she died of an illness instead. And father won't live too much longer than a normal human since the bond wasn't complete both ways. Naruto grimaced, that doesn't sound pleasant, I know, but, but, she smiled, I still want to be with you Naruto, okay, he looked into pale lavender eyes and let his own forehead fall against hers in surrender, 
He knew that deep down he was aching for someone like her, it just came in a different form than he thought it would. Sure Hanada chan I'll be yours, as long as I can. Naruto wrapped his arms around her waist. I've always wanted someone to love, but I guess I never knew where to look. His smile matched hers. But, let's wait a bit on the mating, I want to get to know the real you first. But my clan, they don't want you as my mate, they want to wait until they can find another Pasani among the other clans. Naruto's smile turned feral, then they'll find out how hard it is to tear something precious away from Naruto Uzumaki A. Eh? Her cheeks burned crimson as he leaned in and kissed her softly on the lips. She moaned into it, the heat in her chest blooming to match. Naru, mate, he chuckled, you're going to keep on about that until we do it aren't you? Aha, uh -huh, she mumbled into him as her arms wrapped around his neck. You know you're still naked right? Don't care, you like me naked. He sighed and nodded minutely. This is going to be harder on me than I thought. Hanada's eyes closed as she rested her head in the crook of his neck. Believe it. That got a grim smile from him. Okay, I think we need to get dressed before someone else shows up. My luck hasn't been too good on that sort of thing recently. She sighed tiredly and froze. Knock, knock. Naruto and Hanada glanced at each other, both of them having gone rigid at the sound. The blonde gulped audibly and asked, H. Hanada-chan, who is out there? Hanada bit her lip nervously and turned her head slightly, activating her by a kugan. Her expression went from worried to relieved. She turned back to him. It's Kurunai-sensei, thanked Kami. I thought it was Neji. Um, Hanada, how does she know that either of us are here? I just moved into this apartment. He turned his own head to the door as the knocking came again. The Pasani on his lap shifted uneasily. Kiba-kun might have told her. Knock knock. Yeah, but why would Kiba have told her where I live? Hanada frowned. I don't know. Never mind. Just hide in my bedroom or something and I'll answer the door. Okay. Naruto-kun. Hanada quickly stood up, giving him an excellent view of, well, everything. She quickly moved into the bedroom and closed the door. Naruto watched her go unable to keep his eyes off her swaying rear. He sighed and stood, then he moved across the room to open the front door. It swung open to reveal the serene expression of one Kurunai Yuhi, Hinata's sensei and the Genjutsu mistress of Konoha. Naruto looked her up and down, registering her body language. Kurunai was not the kind of person to reveal her thoughts in her expression, preferring to let her posture speak for her, and boy was it speaking. He was by no means a master of reading body language, but from what he could tell, she was as suspicions as hell. Not something that made him very comfortable. Um. Hi Kurunai sensei. What do you want? She smiled sweetly. Ah, hello Naruto-san. I was wondering if you could tell me where Hinata was. Kiba just left, but he said that Hinata's scent was hovering around here. Neji-san asked me to help find her on her father's behalf. Naruto blinked in surprise and covered. Huh, why do they want to see Hanada-chan? No clue. Kurunai shrugged. He only said that it was important family business and I'm not one to argue with it, especially since she hasn't left the clan compound for quite a while. I assumed that she was in some kind of trouble with her father. Oh, Naruto looked away. I just saw her, but I'm not sure what she's doing. Do you need help finding her? Kurunai shook her head. Not particularly. There are quite a few Hyuga around looking for her. I was just checking with you, she turned. If she isn't here and you don't know where she is, I have other things I need to do. But if you see her again. One red eye turned back to regard him. You may want to tell her about it. With that Kurunai vanished in a swirl of leaves, leaving Naruto with the impression that Kurunai knew that Hinata was inside. Otherwise, why had she seemed so suspicious? He didn't know but he had a bad feeling about this. Naruto shook his head and stepped back, closing the door. A second later he was across the room and opening the bedroom door, what he saw nearly made him faint. From blood loss if nothing else, Hanada, still quite naked, was stretched luxuriously over his bed her nose buried deep into his combat jacket. Naruto stood there watching as she took a deep breath, the orange and black garment clutched tightly in her hands. A ruddy blush had crept over her cheeks once again and her eyes were closed in pleasure. Behind her perfect butt, 
Her tail swept in lazy circles, the blue appendage drawing even more attention than usual to her entrancing form. He still couldn't believe she was stark naked like that, not that he minded. Naruto pinched himself idly, no, this still wasn't a dream, not that he wanted it to be. The girl, naked and stunning as she was, he wanted her to be there. He might have been drawn to her physically, but he still longed for affection. There was no denying that, and regardless of how sudden it was, his heart wanted it. He felt like he needed her. It was so hard not to give in to her completely from the get-go. So hard not to drown her in the affection that Sakura had always shrugged off. But he had to admit to himself that there was a problem, actually several and they weren't all on Hinata's side. He had problems, secrets, and he wasn't sure he could tell her. She said she loved him, but how far would that extend? He didn't know. Ah, nah. Ruto, sorry. I didn't see you. Hinata blushed even harder her eyes focused on him with a dark intensity. He could feel her practically undressing him with her eyes even as she asked, what did Kurnai sensei want? He coughed. Ahem she wanted to see you and I think she knows you're here, but she left when I told her you weren't. Maybe she. Hanada nodded, and turned around, sitting cross-legged on his bed. Kurnai sensei knows how I feel about you Naruto-kun, she glanced away. I used to ask her about how I could, approach you. But she always told me just to do it and let everything sort itself out. She, probably is letting me have my chance that I always wanted. That's nice of her, uh huh, Hanada nodded and, still hugging his jacket to her chest, beckoned him to come forward. Naruto felt his heart leap into his throat as he moved to sit on the edge of the bed. So, we need to talk Hanada-chan, like a lot. I know, you want to know about me. I understand if you can't love me right away, but, but you will. Her eyes burned into him. You'll love me, and we can. Hanada went abruptly silent but her face and neck darkened and her tail curled slowly. We can. Um, she purred at the very thought, her eyes going half-lidded. Naruto breathed in the heady scent of her arousal. It was intoxicating, but he shook his head to clear it. He needed to get himself together before he did something he might regret. He sighed. Listen Hinata, it's not just you who I need to know more about, but me that you need to know more about. You said that you followed me around, but I have secrets that no amount of, stalking. Hinata pouted, that no matter how much you followed me around, you couldn't know about, Naruto swallowed audibly and glanced away from her. You aren't the only one who has crazy secrets that you don't tell anyone. But, Hinata looked pensive and scooted closer on the bed. You could tell them to me. R. Right Naruto-kun. His eyes flicked between her and the other side of the room as he weighed her words. Could he trust her with it? There were people who knew, in fact almost the whole village knew even if they only knew a shadow of the truth. In reality Hanada should have known, along with all the rookies, but the younger generation had the truth kept from them. Of the rookie twelve, only Sasuke and Sakura knew the truth, at least to his knowledge. If push came to shove he was sure Shikamaru could guess, but he was too lazy to. And that had only been recently. Sakura still wasn't over it. She said she forgave him for hurting her and she was honest when she said so, but he knew. He knew that the pain he'd caused wasn't the issue. Sakura was raised by one of the bad families who believed that he should have been killed as an infant. The way Sakura treated him when they were little, and even up to present day was proof enough. She might not hate him, but compared to the amount of time they had known each other, she didn't treat him as a friend. He almost never saw Ino, but she treated him better than Sakura. He thought it was unreasonable to think it, but how could he not? If Sakura, the girl who had been on his team from the beginning, the girl who he'd tried his every waking moment to gain attention from couldn't see him as Naruto Uzumaki, without seeing the demon inside as well, how could Hinata, the girl who he'd been completely oblivious to? He wanted oh so badly to tell her, to recall all the nasty words exchanged between him and the fox. He felt like it would be the greatest unburdening in the history of the world. To let someone know his innermost thoughts. But still, she was someone who he had to admit, he didn't know well. Hinata Hayuga, the shy, often flustered girl who was beautiful in a delicate sort of way. The one who always seemed to be cheering him on. He'd noticed that much at least. 
the only person in academy who didn't laugh once when he said he'd become Hokage, he remembered that too. Could she be the one who accepted him completely and without reservation, demon and all? How would she feel if she knew that? Only a short while before he'd almost lost control and, even if she hadn't wanted it, he would have taken her on the floor. Would she feel safe around some clanless orphan whose only strong suit was more chakra and courage than he knew what to do with? He didn't know. Naruto, Kun, Hanada's voice snapped him out of his thoughts and he turned back to her. She looked curious and slightly worried. Naruto Kun, please tell me what's wrong, I page. Promise to help no matter what it is, one hand reached out to brush his cheek. He couldn't help himself. He leaned into her touch, savoring it. How long had he wished Sakura would do as much? And now Hanada did it without prompting. It made his chest burn with longing. He desired to be accepted so much, would she grant that wish at least? H. Hanada. His voice came out a bit low, making it seem as though he was growling. What do you know about the Kyubi? She seemed confused. I know that it attacked the village about the same time that we were born and destroyed a good portion of the village before the fourth Hokage defeated it. At least that's what the clan elders told me in Hanabi. Father never talks about it and once when I mentioned it to Neji he gave me this look and didn't answer. I know that the biju can't actually be killed so I assumed that it was sealed inside one of the village's janin or something. Naruto shook his head. Hanada opened her mouth to speak but he stopped her. Hanada, the Kyubi has almost infinite chakra, a janin would die if it were sealed inside them. Their chakra networks would be eaten away by its power in hours or days. Jinchuriki are almost always made out of newborns, do you, do you remember what my birthday is? N. No, you never celebrated it with anyone that I knew, and you never told anyone from my team. I thought that since you were an orphan, you might not know what it was. Hanada. My birthday is the 10th of October, the same day as the Kyubi attack. Naruto. I don't understand. I am the Kyubi's vessel, the fourth Hokage sealed the Kyubi in me. He saw the look of sudden understanding on her face and closed her mouth with a finger, letting his eyes close as well. He couldn't bear it if her beautiful eye narrowed in suspicion or fear, he'd never be able to look his reflection in the eyes again. It would crush him, if the girl who said she loved him, was afraid of him, Naruto started when he felt her hands on his own, pulling him towards her. He kept his eyelids closed, not wanting to look, even as her arms wrapped around him. Naruto-kun, I'm sorry. I should have realized, her breath hitched. So, that's why everyone in the village looks at you like that. He opened his eyes and looked up into her face. No terror, anger, or reproach lingered there. He couldn't see anything besides her tears. N. Naru. 2. I'm so, a. Eh, ashamed, I never tried to help. I always w. Watched you, but never, tried to, do anything for you, I should have. I should have noticed, the way everyone always treated you, a tear sped a trail down her cheek. I'm, her breath hitched as her arms suddenly were crushing him against her. I won't leave you because of that Naruto-kun. You deserve better than that. Naruto was dumbstruck. Hanada was crying, for him. How was that possible? Just a moment ago he'd been fearing how she would react to his holding the Kyubi. And now she was acting like she had done something terrible, by not knowing something that she had no way of knowing. It hurt him to hear her cry, to feel the hitch in her chest. But at the same time it felt wonderful. Someone was crying for him, and not Tsunade or Jiraiya who were all but family. Hanada was a friend who he almost never saw often, she was crying for him, him. Hanada-chan, stop, her arms loosened slightly, letting him pull back, but the tears didn't stop. Hanada please don't cry for me. Being the vessel of the Kyubi is something I accepted a long time ago. You can't punish yourself for not noticing. It's just, that's something you have to know about me if you want to be around me. Some days my control over him loosens, every desire I have is a weakness. If I'm angry then his chakra reacts to that anger makes me furious. Hanada wiped at her eyes, looking at him with something like trepidation. You could lose control easily. No, he shook his head. But no, that wasn't exactly true. In the right circumstances he could lose control very easily. Almost too easily. Like when it wasn't anger or sadness that fueled his emotion, 
During times of anger or depression the Kayubi could exert the most control and his influence grew. But he was also used to fending off his attacks then. It was times when he felt intense desire, greed, envy, fear, things that he weren't used to were like doorways for the fox's chakra. Just like a short while earlier when he used Kayubi's chakra to force Hinata to stop trying to mate him. He'd been unprepared for the surge of lust that washed over him. If he had any less self-control, needless to say Hinata would have been in a compromising position even now. Naruto shivered then, the thought of fucking Hinata invading his thoughts. He shook his head hard in an attempt to dispel those images. Damn it was hard not to just give in, push forward, and kiss her. He wanted to kiss her, devour her lips. Shit, Naruto cursed under his breath, making Hinata's brow crease with worry. N. Naruto-kun, what's wrong? Nothing Hinata-chan, it's just that with you naked like that, and, I'm really tempted to give in right now. He sucked in a breath. Why? Your scent is starting to get to me too. She bit her lip, looking indecisive. Hanada leaned into him her hands sliding down to find his. Naru, you can lose control if you want, I don't mind. I really don't, we could get to know each other better after. She sounded hopeful, her eyes becoming almost pleading. Can we mate now? You know you want to kit, go ahead, take the vixen for a spin. Kayubi, ah, don't give me that tone brat. You act as though I haven't given you anything but misery. Who do you think is responsible for your ungodly chakra reserves or that insane regenerative ability? It isn't simply because of your heritage, I can tell you that much. You're also the reason that Sakura has a scar on her arm that might not go away ever, you're also the reason I'm hated by most of the village. And, you're the last person I wanted to hear from right now. Fuck off. Brat, I'll speak to you as I see fit. Naruto cursed inwardly and tired to look away from Hanada. He could feel the Biju's chakra building in his system. His heart rate was spiking, a sure sign that he was losing ground. Go away, I don't want to listen to you while I'm trying to have a heartfelt conversation with Hanada chan Perhaps you would like me to mention that I don't care what you think of me. The fox growled within the confines of his mind. You make it sound like I'm evil, when really? All I've ever tried to do is get free of your body in the only way I can. Is that so unreasonable? Why are you even bringing this up right now? Because boy, there is something I was going to tell you before you became all indignant. What? Spit it out. Hee <laughs> hee. Good luck holding back. Naruto blinked confusion for a moment. What the hell did the fox mean by that? Good luck holding back. That sounded like he was. He suddenly stiffened as a delicious scent filtered into his nose. Naruto couldn't help himself he opened his mouth, taking a deep breath. It was sweet and, musky, with a tint of cinnamon. Naruto-kun, you spaced out, are you okay? Hanada asked, leaning in further. Consider this a birthday present. A late one mind you, but better late than never, eh? Hanada was all he could smell. Naruto lost control. To say she was surprised when he abruptly kissed her would be an understatement. And to say that she even thought about resisting his sudden advance would be a bold-faced lie. Hanada moaned into him, her hands invading his clothes and tail curling in pleasure as he straddled her. Naruto buried his hands in her milky skin. She was just so soft, making him want to squeeze and kiss every part of her. The whimpers and moans were doing things to him, making his vision sharpen even as his tongue invaded her mouth. Hanada's scent thickened even more. It excited him. He realized that he wanted nothing more in that moment than to take her for his own, make her his. No. No, N-O-N-O-N-O. -O -O. Naruto's eyes went wide as he jerked back, forcing himself into a backward somersault off the bed. He came up panting, his face red with both anger and embarrassment, and no small amount of desire. What had he just been about to do? For the briefest moment he'd completely taken leave of his senses. You bastard. Tisk. You have too much self-control for your own good. And here I thought I was doing you a favor. The fox sounded annoyed, as though he really thought he was being generous. Next time I'll just keep my gifts to myself. Seeing how I don't have anyone else to give them to, much less someone who would appreciate them. Naruto's eyes blazed in fury as he turned his rage inward towards the Kyubi. What fucking gift are you talking about? I refuse to do something like that to Hanada. It's borderline rape. 
as if you have her consent what's the issue here kit you son of a bitch i care about her more than that i will not just just what the fox asked snidely you know what i'm tired of this brat you run around on your high horse pretending to take the moral high ground all the time it's pretentious and aggravating why can't you just take what you want instead she is my you're what your friend she doesn't want that any more than you do how many times has she told exactly what she wants naruto's jaw clenched as the kyubi continued don't you get it brat i am a prisoner in your mind trapped watching every moment of your pitiful life it's like watching the most boring play in existence in slow motion and then right when the plot thickens and something halfway interesting happens you decide you want to take things slow well let me tell you something uzumaki i'm sick of watching you throw opportunities away after all these years it almost feels like i'm the one who's passing up on all of it you so you think you can just interfere like that this is my life you asshole you're a freaking immortal ball of chakra for kami's sake once i die of old age or whatever you get released so stop trying to fuck up my life just because you're bored with how i live it oh yes damn it i leave you alone don't i unless me or my friends are in danger of dying do i ever take your chakra no i've never done anything to you that warrants the treatment you give me if it wasn't for the fact that you keep trying to make me kill my friends i might actually have tried to be friends with you but no you have to be a big ball of hate sealed inside me the kyubi was silent for a long moment naruto's fists had clenched tightly the knuckles going white while hanada was still on the bed looking at him strangely another minute passed and the fox finally responded you're mistaken about what when you die i will cease to exist as i am the fourth hokage cut my yin and yang chakra apart in truth only half of my power is sealed within you without my yin chakra i cannot reincarnate in this world and without both halves of my chakra together i am unable to re-manifest when you die the kyubi's growling voice lowered as he continued i will live only as long as you do unless i somehow escape your body before then do you understand that your life as miserable and short as it will be will most likely be the last life i have left to live naruto was speechless he'd never expected the kyubi to ever be so blunt the demon had never in his life given him information about itself freely always it had been hidden to make itself seem stronger this admission was against everything the prideful kitsune had shown him kyubi how would you feel knowing that you will be imprisoned until your death knowing that you were sealed inside someone without the intention of ever being released well boy how would you feel about that i didn't know you never tell me anything about yourself all i have to work with is what others say about you which is nothing good the fox let out a long sigh within the confines of naruto's mind listen boy i always wanted to be left alone to have peace in solitude the last 70 years that hasn't been possible I've been sealed inside three successive generations. The first two were even worse than this. I couldn't even see what was going on in the outside world. It was nothing but darkness, more than fifty years of not knowing anything unless they drew on my power. And by now, I've become somewhat tired of seeing you waste what few chances you get. You mean, that, just now was your way of helping? Naruto blinked at the absurdity of it. Was the Kyubi really that stupid? did the fox think that he would want to take advantage of hanada in that way i felt that you were trying to hold off on something which there is really no need to be hesitant about point in fact the longer you delay the more likely the hyuga clan will find a way of permanently separating you too the kyubi let that sink in for a moment how would you feel if hanada told you how she felt like this and allowed you to have a taste of what it feels like to be loved and then have her taken from you naruto paled that's what you mean naru kun what's wrong your chakra is all over the place please tell me what's wrong hanada was suddenly beside him her pale lavender eyes right in his face naruto kun mate i want to help she bit her lip cutely the action making naruto want to kiss her again hanada sorry that was the kyubi messing with my emotions the kyubi hanada's eyes fell you mean the demon caused you to do that he nodded slightly it's a bit more complicated than that. His chakra heightens any emotion I feel, 
So if, I wanted to do something like that, it causes the feeling to go out of control. I'm sorry it's just I don't think I'm ready for that yet. I want to get to know you first. Hanada's blush deepened and her thighs rubbed together. Mo, Naru-kun, when you say that it just makes me want it now. She squirmed under his gaze, her ears twitching back and forth. Mate, I want it. Hanada, I can't just do it like that, you mean more to me than that. She closed her eyes as if giving up, but in a split second's movement, Naruto found her on top of him. I want you now. Hina, but it was too late. Hanada's lips were on his neck, marking his skin, and her arms were around his neck, keeping him from pulling back. Her purring was back threefold as she straddled him. Naruto tried in vain to push her back. But, why was he? He wanted to kiss her and be kissed by her. He wanted to have her like this. I see you've decided to stop fighting your instincts. S. Shut up, Kayubi. Naruto groaned as Hinata's hips started moving over his lap, grinding down on him. This, isn't. Isn't what? Naruto's head fell back as Hinata's hand slipped down between them, into his pants. Her slender fingers wrapped around his manhood and squeezed. Fuck, never, mind, he gave in, one arm wrapping around her waist as his other hand slid down to pull her against him. Hinata. Hinata noticed his sudden surrender and giggled. Naruto-kun is such a pervert. But. That's okay. Her ears twitched even as he led his eyes close in pleasure. She leaned forward and her hands came to rest on his cheeks. I love you Naruto-kun. What little remained of Naruto's resistance shattered. His arms rose, hands seeking out every tender spot they could find. And at the same time he pushed forward to capture a kiss, her first kiss, and every kiss thereafter. The instant their lips touched any self-control Hanada had vanished. All pretense was gone, she moaned into the kiss, deepening it, opening her mouth to him. Even then it wasn't enough. Her hips shifted back and forth, each stroke earning a gasp and a pulse of need from his manhood. But it wasn't enough. They needed more. They needed to take it to the next level. Hanada acted first. Her fingers, tipped with white claws again, shredded his pants and pulled the tattered remains down. His rod sprang free, the skin all but scalding Hanada as she wrapped her hands around it. She squeezed it again and lifted her hips. Naruto opened his eyes in the very instant that she let go. Hanada, the pale perfect girl on his lap was biting her lip as she stared down at him. Her face was flushed and if his eyes weren't deceiving him. Naru, Hanada purred past his ear. More, he didn't hesitate. He wrapped his arms around her waist and thrust upwards. Hanada's mouth fell open and he toes curled. Suddenly Naruto felt something contract around his cock. It all but made his eyes roll back in his head. F. Fuck. She got tighter. A low groan escaped gritted teeth and he struggled to collect himself. Then Hanada bit him. Sharp teeth sank into the flesh of his neck while her hips bucked against his. The pain barely even registered. The overwhelming sense of being connected to her blotted out everything else. T. This is all fuck. If she, he wasn't about to finish the thought. Hanada was already raising her hips and dropping herself down again. A growl wrenched itself from him. His vision went crimson. Dot and he lost himself to his lust. The first light of dawn crept across the bed, a silent invader to the two laying there. Inch by inch it encroached upon the dark interior of Naruto's bedroom until at last it reached the eyes of a certain sleeping girl. For the first minute or so nothing happened. Then her nose twitched. Only seconds passed before one eye cracked open in irritation. I. Is it morning already? Hanada yawned and rubbed at her eyes, wishing that the curtains had been closed. Ever since she'd awakened her demonic blood sleeping had become just a little more important. Unlike her preteen self she could no longer stay functional on less than six hours of rest. And, recalling the previous day's activities, mental squeal of delight, she should have still been sleeping. The break of dawn was far too early with how long her mate kept her awake. Speaking of which, rolling over to look upon the face of her lover Hanada expected to see his handsome face as it always was. Tanned and unmarked save for the strange whisker-like birthmarks on either side of his jaw. What she saw however, was very different from what she'd seen just hours ago. His skin was still tanned, as if he'd spent hours upon hours in the sun. And yes, his whisker marks were exactly as they were. 
Yet there were a few things that had most definitely not been there before. For instance the small round ears poking out of the top of his head. Or the strange red patterns that ran over his shoulders and chest. Neither of which compared to the massive scythe-like blades that protruded backwards from each forearm. And even they weren't as startling, at least for her, as Naruto's scent. The previous day Naruto's scent had reminded her of wood smoke mixed with sweat and something vaguely spicy. Now, now her mate smell of freshly cut grass, and fleshly spilt blood. And there was something else there, something undeniably familiar and animal. It went beyond the simple fact that Naruto had to have awakened some kind of demonic heritage as a result of their mating. W. Where have I smelled this? It wasn't very long ago I think. Was it when we were in Tsunade-sama's office? I think so but it doesn't make sense. Sitting up Hinata took notice of even more changes. It was easier now that her mind was no longer clouded by her demonic instincts. For the first time in a while she could think clearly. What really drew the eye was the long bushy tail but think it wasn't a fox tail or a wolf tail. It was shorter and not quite as fluffy. But what is he? Naruto-kun is an orphan. He couldn't have known about this any more than me. Her jaw dropped as something occurred to her. I, it's no wonder I was attracted to him for so long. It makes sense now, not just during academy, but even before. If Naruto had been a Pasani all along it explained why she'd felt drawn to him since that first time they met. Not only that but, father can't stop us from being together now. Hanada almost shouted in joy, but restrained herself when Naruto grumbled in his sleep. Something about ramen if she wasn't mistaken. Oh, Naruto-kun, I wish I knew something about your heritage. Maybe if I did father could be convinced to give his blessing too. As it is, he'll still see you as a clanless orphan. Um, Hanada. Hanada shivered pleasantly as Naruto's eyes opened and focused on her. They were no longer the startling blue she'd always known. Now they were an icy blue so pale they almost seemed white. And in the very center where his pupils should have been was a flickering red slit. Just meeting his strange new eyes was enough to send a chill through her. There was something almost frightening about those eyes. N. Naruto-kun. The blonde stretched and forced himself up, rubbing at his eyes. Morning. Did we? He looked down at her pale skin which was now marked even more than she remembered. Small scratches and marks covered her shoulders, arms, and breasts like a constellation of starts. Aha. Uh -huh. She answered the unfinished question wondering what his reaction would be. She wasn't expecting the kiss. Without warning Naruto was on top of her, pinning her to the bed under his bulk. He had a brief instant to note that the strange red markings she'd seen covered his whole chest before she was lost in a passionate kiss. Naruto didn't seem to notice the changes to his own body. All of his attention was on her. Not that she minded, not at all, even though her instinct to mate had been sated the night before she couldn't deny the desire to do it again was there. Nearly three minutes passed before Naruto seemed satisfied. He drew back, taking in her nude form with a predatory grin. She'd never seen him smile like that. She was eager to see more of this side of him. Then Naruto leaned back, and the blade protruding from his left forearm gouged him in the leg. The F-U-U-U-C-K. Hanada sighed. She should have expected this. Her reaction less than two years before had been quite similar. If less bloody, here we go, the end. Remember to subscribe and like this video. See you in the next video.